Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Jonathan Andrews. I'm going to talk a little bit about Strogen's disease. Um, it is a uh, common um, autoimmune disease in where um, lymphocytes attack uh, exocrine glands through your body. And like I said, it's autoimmune, so you don't really have control over it. Um, what is an exocrine gland? Well, um, some are sweat glands through the body. Um, the saliva glands that make your saliva or your spit. Um, uh, your lacrimal glands that make your tears, mammary glands, um, and uh, some prostate glands and others, mucus secreting glands are attacked um, by the body's own uh, immune system and therefore um, you begin to dry out and the glands don't function properly. Um, primary estrogens is associated strongly with females. Um, females at a rate of um, nine to one compared to men. Um, some studies are showing uh, 20 to one um, compared to men. So it's predominantly uh, females. Um, usually in the fourth, fifth, sixth decade of life is when um, you begin to become affected by this disease. And um, other diseases can put you at risk for this disease, such as if you already have autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus, uh, um, systemic sclerosis, and uh, other autoimmune diseases like connective tissue disorders um, can put you at risk for developing Schrodinger's disease. Um, and anywhere from one to four million Americans in a year are, are affected by Schrodinger's disease. Um, some symptoms of Schrodinger's um, are, uh, well, the predominant two symptoms are dry eye, a, a tremendously dry eye and dry mouth. So I'm not talking about the dry eye that you experience with your contact lenses or the dry eye that you know you might have when you wake up in the morning. I'm talking about um, extremely debilitating dry eye to where you feel grittiness, sandy feeling in your eye all day long. Um, you feel like something's stuck in the eye. You can't see properly because of your tears. Um, you can't see to drive. You can't see to read the computer. You can't see to do your job. Um, all these things are what we're talking about with dryness. Um, mouth dryness, uh, debilitating mouth dryness as far as like you have difficulty speaking. Uh, swallowing is a challenge. Um, you might have a burning throat that doesn't go away. And uh, that puts you at risk for a lot of dental caries and uh, cavities. Um, so um, some serious stuff, not just your average you know, bedtime mouth dryness from sleeping with your mouth open overnight. Um, joint pain and stiffness can be a symptom systemically. So, um, you know, you could have a, a fatigue that's kind of disabling and also um, systemically organs can be affected like your kidneys, um, your liver, you could have a, a, a condition with your blood known as vasculitis, um, blood vessels flare up. You could have neuropathy where your fingers and uh, hands and things, uh, toes, uh, feet become numb. Um, and uh, out of some of our surgeons' patients, uh, five to ten percent of patients do go on to develop uh, lymphoma, which is a cancer. Um, luckily, these cancers are a bit more on the mild side. Um, however. Um, for, for these Schrodinger's patients, uh, but it can occur in five to 10% of the patients. Um, as far as diagnosing uh, Schrodinger's disease and how do we diagnose it as an eye care provider, um, basically there's a few things that need to happen first. Number one, we do an ocular examination and uh, we figure out um, how dry is the eye. We put a couple different dyes in on the surface of the eye. We evaluate the cornea, evaluate the conjunctiva, and we can put you in something called a, a sickest staining score um, scale. And uh, that can help uh, predict if you um, have a certain type of dryness that would be more affiliated with a disease like Schrodinger's. And uh, if that's the case, we would go on to order a blood work like anti-Rho SSA, anti-Rho um, SSB uh, type blood work. And uh, this um, blood work is uh, pretty specific. It's not always accurate. Um, we also would order something like rheumatoid uh, uh, factor and uh, anti-nuclear antibodies or ANA testing. So that's the blood work we could initiate as your eye doctor if we were suspicious of um, Schrodinger's disease. We could also work with our friends over at dental surgery um, and they could uh, do a biopsy of the minor salivary glands and see and send it off for um, uh, uh, histological imaging and see, hey, does this correlate with a surgeon syndrome? So that's how we could confirm the diagnosis. Um, as far as uh, treatments, once we uh, figure out that you do have Schrodinger's disease and as your eye care providers, we will work diligently uh, with other groups. And first and foremost, we refer you to a rheumatologist. Rheumatology um, would help get systemically um, your body under better control. So they prescribe drugs like hydroxychloroquine. Um, they prescribe drugs like methotrexate um, if, if indicated. 
Um, they would also treat you with uh, drugs like pilocarpi um, to help increase mucus secreting glands or saliva through the body. Um, if you're that dry, that, that, that could be a help for you. Um, also, a uh, rheumatologist would uh, uh, consider putting you on non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines um, like over-the-counter ibuprofens and naproxens are stronger if needed. Um, and so systemically, um, you know, we would get you in with the rheumatologist. Secondly, um, simultaneously, we would get your eyes treated uh, to feel more comfortable. So treatments range, uh, there's a number of treatments for Schrodinger's or just dry eye in general, but basically uh, with Schrodinger's disease, we'd want to increase your natural tear production as best we could with any method that we could and also get inflammation of the ocular surface down. Um, and the way we do that is with anti-inflammatories, prescription strength, like steroid drops, um, we would prescribe drops like um, topical therapies like uh, Restasis, Zydra, and Sequa, um, as well as we would use uh, devices to help block the tear ducts known as punctal occlusion. Um, and uh, punctal occlusion works very, very well um, to try to keep what little tears Schrodinger's patients are making on the surface of the eye. And uh, uh, in addition to some of the punctal plug therapies, we would um, watch very closely mybomian glands and how these mybomian glands are secreting. Uh, we want to make sure that these parts of the tears, um, if your glands are still alive, that we take as best care as we can. So we have uh, infrared imaging that we use on the tear, uh, on the eyelids themselves to see how many of these glands are alive and uh, how good do they look? Can we get them working a little better or not? Um, so that's something that's very interesting. Uh, that technology is used every day in our clinics. And uh, if the glands are dying or on their way to dying, we do treatments and therapies um, in our clinics to keep them alive and well. Um, so those are always options. There are um, uh, therapies that we can help to restore the ocular surface, such as amniotic uh, membrane therapies and things along those natures. Another treatment that uh, we can use is amniotic membrane therapy in the form of a contact lens. Um, this therapy helps to reduce the ocular surf, uh, re reduce the ocular surface inflammation and restore um, natural epithelium healing. And uh, these treatments are groundbreaking for a lot of people who have tons of uh, issues with uh, uh, dryness from Schrodinger's um, and uh, where indicated they're very helpful. Uh, an excellent treatment for ongoing therapy for patients uh, who if either uh, failed uh, dry eye therapies before or want to try something new and exhilarating as scleral lens technologies. These scleral lens technologies can help bathe the surface of the, surf, uh, of the eye. And uh, um, basically a scleral lens is the size of a quarter. Um, it's a contact lens that we fill up with fluid it's then sucked onto the eye and it stays there for the duration of the day. Um, that's uh, fluid is um, a pH balance to help um, not be acidic or basic to the ocular surface and it helps to bathe the ocular surface um, all day long so that your eyes are not dry or feeling uncomfortable or gritty through that day. Um, so that's excellent, awesome technology for our Schrodinger's patients. Um, mouth, uh, you know, how do we get your mouth uh, well, uh, less dry? Um, biotin rinses is something over the counter that could be done. Obviously drinking a lot of water, but pilocarpine can be very helpful as prescribed by rheumatology um, to help increase uh, overall patient comfort and satisfaction. So as far as appointments and care, um, basically uh, I like to see our surgeons patients every four to six months. Um, we assess the corneal health. We do some stains onto the surface of the eye, see if there's any damage epithelium or not. Um, four to six months is a good uh, place to have a patient who's uh, stable. Um, if we need to see them sooner, obviously we, we do that as well on an individual basis to Try, try to help optimize their vision and um, how they're seeing. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, we, we keep them in the loop with rheumatology, making sure that um, the care that they're getting is 100% on point and uh, working on an ind individual uh, basis to help with uh, patients with Schrodinger's. So um, that's kind of the rundown of our Schrodinger's treatment protocol at our office. And uh, if you have dry eye and wondering if you have Schrodinger's, come on in for a consultation. We'd be happy to help you and get you set up with rheumatology if indicated. And um, thanks for watching this video. And I hope you got to learn something and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right, bye-bye.